Well, okay. We've had some revelations. Wake up, <laughs> Edward. What is this entity? What the hell? Stop hiding. <sighs> well, he left his demons behind him in his genteel prison. They come with him. Lost an entire day and he fears for her, he fears for Betty. Without her, he is nothing. Her absence feels like drowning. Drowning. Remember, the mother committed suicide by drowning. Huh. Where you go, we go, Edward. You cannot hide from us. Where's Lissy? Alice is not here. Bring her back. Please. I need her. Alice does not love Elizabeth like you do. She loves me. Not like I do, Edward. What? I'm so tired. Please. What I think the... of you so often. You have no idea. You just want me to forgive you so that we can keep looking for your precious, perfect Betty. She needs us. <laughs> she never needed you, Teddy Bear. And she certainly doesn't need us. I can't find her on my own. Well, it's just too bad, my darling Edward. Because we're done playing second fiddle to little sis. Wait, don't go. I, I, I'm talking okay, to, so, to you. Hold on then. Lissy. So the we oh. then. I was thinking maybe the we is that she is like the representation of little sis uh, Elizabeth. But she must be talking about... It sounds like she's talking about the entity thing. And like her and the entity, whatever that thing is... Are not playing second fiddle to Will Sis. Gloves are on. Lissy? Lissy. I'm just going to listen. Listen. Oh. Why? Please. Lissy, you can't keep vanishing on me. Try me. Why are you so angry? You do not know Whoa. Anger, Edward. Okay, so yes. Did you ever meet my father? Alice oh, does Jesus. not want to speak with you. Oh, look. What about you? Are you going to help me? She moves God wherever we look. God those who help themselves. I don't need God's help. I need Lissy. Do you, though? Did you ever? What? I think so. Of course, I... What the hell? Lissy, get back here. Yeah, we're gonna need some answers. She refuses to listen. <laughs> okay. Alice. Don't go. Hear me out. I depend on you both. You can never depend on other people, Edward. I'm not sure you count as other people. Everyone leaves one way or another. You don't. You can't. Is that a challenge? Stop playing games. Are you ordering me? Teddy bear? I'm asking you. Didn't your father always tell you to stand up for yourself? To uh -oh. be a real man and not a sissy? Maybe that's why he put the gun to his head and pulled the trigger. What? Kaboom. He was so disappointed about what his only son had turned Holy into. Holy shit, Lizzie. You're a monster. Takes one to know one. Old fruit. So both of our parents committed suicide? Alice, please. I gave you this jacket. Betty. You were here.
Oh, she is in here. She Listen, I'm tired of chasing you. Alice, be reasonable. I'm trying to talk to you. Lissy, look. Her jacket. I'm sure it wasn't here yesterday, Jesus which means Christ, Betty was Teddy. here. Perhaps when we were out yesterday. Betty, she must have... Betty, 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 Betty. Oh. You love Betty more than you love us. But don't you see? What has Betty done that we haven't? What can she do that we cannot? I have no goddamn idea. We've always been there for you. Why do you keep looking for her? She's real. You're not. So? What? You decide what is real. We are real to you. We'll never be the same. Man. She does not want you. Who are you talking Why about? Why do you think Betty left? She was sick and tired of us. She wanted to escape. Like mother. Drowning herself because she couldn't stand being around us. Like father. Bang! Right in the coconut. Stop. You drive them all away, Edward. All into death. Please. Not us. We're always here for you. I beg you. You are never alone. Stop! Leave me alone, both of you! You want to be alone? You really want to be alone? Fine. You're alone. For good. No way. What in the hell? So, the entity and Alice are the same thing. And maybe that was like a... Maybe like a coping mechanism when we lost our parents and went through like that craziness. Lissy. Come back, please. I get the vibe that that ain't happening. That's so creepy. Whoa, what? Oh. I'm not alone. Well, certainly feels that way now, doesn't it? Uh, that's not me knocking it over. Get up, get up, get up. Up, 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 up. Elizabeth! Is that you? Up, up, up. Are you upstairs? Call for Betty. Now, hold up a second here. Still look the same. As far as I could tell. I feel like there's a reason Betty, that we can keep looking in the mirror, right? Oh, is this gonna be uh I knew you were here. It's locked room. Betty? Betty! Yeah. Are you in there? Open the door! I'm coming in. Stand away from the door. <laughs> okay. What 
Whoa. Ready? Who the sh No. No, 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 no. Oh. Oh, thank you. Is that? Thank you. I thought it was you, Betty. But who? Anna. It's the wife. She's just been in here the whole time. It's from Johan. Addressed to his wife. This is the work of a man in great distress, he thinks. A man is what's end. Edward is keenly aware of penmanship and he notices the quivery lines and numerous mistakes. Did you notice the handwriting, Betty? It was clearly distraught. Knock, er, knock. See, now we're talking to our sister. Enough is enough. After decades of strife, I pray that God will... Tilly, forgive me. I am tired of secrets. For 20 years, I have kept my silence about our discovery, but my silence has only led to misfortune, and my cowardice has only led to death. I will make Frederick pay for what he has done to us, for what they have done to our Ruth. When it is over, I will let the ocean take me to you and Ruth. May God forgive me. Anna was already dead when he wrote this. He had no one else to confess to. What now, Betty? Johann went to confront his brother, probably at Frederick's farm. And then? And then. Exactly. You said this was a gift from another unlucky suitor. He knows the lighter is precious to Elizabeth? An object of sentimental value? Wait, what? Betty would not, he believes, have left this lighter here by accident. It was precious to you. You wouldn't have left it here unless... A signpost. A breadcrumb. You followed Johan to Frederick Fretland's farm, and then to the mine. Johan went to his brother's farm, and Edward fears Betty would have followed. But Betty would not have stopped at the farm. She would have gone all the way to the mine. You wouldn't let this go, Betty. You'd follow your story to the end. Of course. All the way to the end. Now, do I need to put this... Lighter over here. No. Did you go to the mine, Betty? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Whoa. So where is Frederick's farm? That's a good question. Looks like it's off that side by the boat, but I think, you know what, it's probably, um, it's probably just on the other side of that fence. They're probably both in that same location. The gate. Frederick's warning. Yeah. The path leads to his farm. Is it this way? Without question, absolutely. Should have done this right. before. I would jump the gate for you. All these fragments. You'd piece them together into a story, wouldn't you, Betty? So, what do we know? 
Johan and Frederick are partners, and on good terms. Something happens in the mine. Disagreements lead to a falling out. And at the end of it all, 20 years later, Johan walks this path to confront Frederick. Was this your doing, Johan? The burn? You your brother's farm to the ground? And where were you, Betty? Did you witness their fall? It's a safe. What do you reckon, Betty? Mine opening. <sighs> yeah, we wouldn't know this, so... What the hell? Let's see if there's anything else out here at the farm. Maybe that means the answer to that is at the opening of the mine? Simon. Simon's grave. Simon's grave. Born December 5th, 1909. Died September 17th, 1923. The safe. Frederick would choose numbers okay. that meant something to him. Why bury Simon here, not at the cemetery? If the village blamed him for Ruth's death... They might not you really use your imagination, Betty. You'd figure this out in no time. They might not allow it. Oh, look at this. We're not saying anything about it, but she died on 5-12-1909. Wait, what? She died giving birth to him. Whoa. I didn't catch that until recently when we, we found out she was dead. Um. Hmm. Okay. When was that marriage photo taken? Anyways, let's try this first. I would say probably Simon's birthday because it was also the day that she died. Let's try Simon's birthday. <laughs> yep. Another Viking artifact, Betty. Most likely from the same treasure Ruth found. But when did Frederick get this? 20 years ago? Or after Ruth rediscovered it? And if so, was Frederick the one who... Postmarked in Boston? Uh... A curious coincidence. Dear Frederick, I hope this letter... It's in English, Betty. Hope this letter... Because we're from Hanover, Massachusetts, so... Good health. We're concerned about you both. No word from you for almost two years now. Louisa and I speak constantly of visiting Norway, though there never seems to be time. Hmm. All of us still heartbroken about Margaret's passing. We know things have been difficult for you and Simon. Hmm. 
please write when you have the opportunity. God bless. So I got to keep the Mark business and farm going. American relatives, I assume. That's weird. They're from the same area as us. These documents relate to the mine. There doesn't seem to be... What's this? Mr. Fretland. This was written in 02. We expect you to take care of this problem. If the discovery is made public, the authorities will intervene and the mine will be shut down. Should this happen, we will consider it a breach of our contract and we will withdraw our investment. You and your brother will be responsible for all debts and losses. Johan must be convinced to wall up the chamber. What? We've already dealt with the worker who made the discovery. Hmm. It's from an investment bank in Cardiff, and this Wales. The investment that pulled out. What did the brothers find? The Fretland Mining Company. <laughs> I wonder what this unlocks. The mine! Something at the mine. Let's go. You went to the mine. I hope our guardian angel watched over you. Oh, our guardian angel? All right, Betty. So what happens next in your story? What was on earth to cause the avalanche of misfortune? Johan and Frederick discover something in the mine. A cave or chamber of archaeological value. They argue about what to do. If the discovery is made public, it's the end of their enterprise. But why? Johan is convinced or paid to walk away. Their secret stays hidden. Huh. Then, a few months later, the accident. Three men die. The investors pull out. The mine shuts down. Frederick's up to his neck in debt. But why would this be... If they found something there, why would it be the end of their business? Like... Cursed mine in Grovik. Oh. Locals struggle with bad crops and livestock deaths and oh, well, blame okay. it on. They thought they were cursed because of the mine. A thing like that becomes self fulfilling. If you believe you're cursed, every misfortune feeds the delusion. And if they found something in there that was sketch, then it would confirm that it was cursed and it would, they would, everyone would want to shut it down. So, 20 years pass. Feud grew and festered in the cold belly of Gravik, a cancerous beast born from the wreckage of the mine. Let's hear about this first. The feud tears the village apart, setting neighbor against neighbor. And then, Ruth stumbles across the secret in the mine. After all this time, the truth may finally come to light, but she dies. And the day after, Simon is murdered. It's a catalyst. Old grievances resurface. No matter who you stand with, you're a traitor. Well, it's, yeah, to one side. Things escalate. More people die from disease, despair, suicides, murder. There 
was no one to stop it, Betty. They were alone. That's the real curse of Grovik. Isolation. <laughs> yeah, we heard a couple of times where, like, did people just forget that this place existed? The mail wasn't going out and all other kinds of stuff. Well. This place is cursed. Ridiculous. Oh, there's the doll head. Ruth was here the day she fell. I'm looking for something that was never there. Is there a truth here that I haven't yet grasped? What am I truly searching for in this desolate hole under the mountains? Something spooked her, and then she ran all the way to the cliff where... Do you know what happened, Betty? Did Maybe... It? it is an actual curse. Maybe it was getting people to kill themselves, like we Hello? saw that guy. Betty, are you in there? Maybe she flung herself off the cliff. Please answer me. Oh, nice. Because we found this. He oh, I was gonna say we just hear people like. that pin oh, Eddie, oh, a little bit more though this is mother's brooch oh you always wore this you wouldn't take it off unless breadcrumb here for a reason what am i not seeing Jeez! What the hell? Oh no, no, no. Are you serious? I need to know what's in there! Yikes. Edward! Edward! What? Betty? Elizabeth? Is that? Notice how the Fretland Brothers you? part is crossed out. Edward? Where are you? I'm on my way, Betty. Wait for me. Come on. Edward, where are you? I'm on my way. I'm here, Betty. It's Edward. It's me. What the? F Edward, please. Hurry. I'm coming, Betty. I can hear you. Hold on. I'm almost there. Come on. Just stay put, Elizabeth. I'm on my way. Edward. The house. Don't move. I'm coming for you. Inside the house. No way. It's gonna be that freaking mannequin. Isn't that right? Elizabeth. No. There you are. No. Finally. No. 
You have no idea how long I've been looking for you. You, you had me so worried. I, I, I. It's her. He knows. It's Betty. He knows her so well. Her scarf, her hat, her gloves. It's all there. He knows Elizabeth so well. Every part of her, her scent, her clothes. She's complete, and she's here. He found her. Look, your brooch. Mother's brooch. You must have lost it at the mine. Let me put it on for you, Betty. What? I wouldn't want you to lose it again. Uh. Oh. What? She's been dead for 30 years. Edward. Elizabeth was never here. But we didn't come for her. We came for Johan, and Anna, and Frederick, and Simon, and... and Ruth. We're here to tell their stories. No. Elizabeth. She's here. I... You know Betty died when she was a baby. She drowned in the pond. And you found that her. That was, we heard about the pond and it was weird. Yeah. You were just 11. You carried her to your mother. And your mother. She hated you for that. <laughs> she could never forgive you for bringing her baby to her. And you could never forgive yourself for what she did after. You always forget this. Because you don't want to be alone. So you bring Betty back. Again. And again. To New York. To Boston. To the house. But always just out of reach. Never quite there. The scent of her. The echo of her. But never really her. All it does is make you lonelier. But the thing is, Edward, you're never alone. You have us. And you'll always have us. Betty's... She was never there for you. She couldn't be. You can't lose us. We're a part of you. Forever. And ever. And ever. But you need to let Betty go now. There's not room for all of us in there. I couldn't save you, Elizabeth. I'm so sorry. So if she died when she was that young, then who is this picture even? Greta Gaynor, Paramore, Lucky Star, my biggest fan? What? She's just an actress or something? Or like... It is as painful to wake from a vision as it is to be born anew. What? Okay.